All right, it's the day after Thanksgiving, and what is this monstrosity? <laughs> uh, this is, for me, kind of one of those things that's just so ugly and awful that it's absolutely gorgeous. I love this case. Some weeks back, uh, around the time we were having all kinds of nasty, uh, shortly after the time we had all the nasty fires here in Northern California, I headed up to a small town south of Portland, Oregon to hang out with some friends of mine. And I know you're not supposed to do that during a pandemic, but we all got tested and we're very careful. We're all quarantined and all that stuff. So I uh, went up there, hung out with a couple of friend, longtime friends of mine. And one of them had a bunch of old computer gear, including this just potato of a case. And, you know, I might diss it, but at the same time, I actually really, really like this case. So it is kind of grungy and rusty and um, yeah, it's just not a, pr a pretty case. So uh, I am gonna try and do this intro pretty quickly. I'm running out of daylight. See, the sun's supposed to set in about 40 minutes. So it's, uh, we're, we're long in the day here. I've just been really busy the day after Thanksgiving here in the US. So uh, step one, of course, is to get this thing cleaned uh, before I move my 486 build into this baby AT style case and that's the plan for this because this case is a lot more period appropriate for my 46 whereas the case that it's in now would be kind of more early Pentium era appropriate. I still love that case and I'm glad that I had it uh, have it but uh, I'd like to move something else into that and use this instead for the 46 build. So let's do a quick um, We'll pull, pull the front off and you can see what's inside. Hopefully I have all the parts. I don't know if I do. I may need to fabricate stuff, depending on how long it takes me to do this. Uh, this is just part one, which is mostly just gonna be cleanup. I may actually paint this case. Uh, I might only paint the interior. It really just depends on how rusty things are. And if I wanna do something like paint all the rusty spots with some kind of uh, Rust-Oleum rust sealer or something like that, of course, after I clean it uh, with a wire brush on a Dremel or a drill or something like that. All right, so you can see the shadow creeping up the case. So let's, uh, let's hurry up here. So yeah, this thing's pretty gross. Um, this one slides off from the front here. Oh yeah, lovely sounds. Oh man. <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> Oh, this is lovely. So here's our, here's the interior, which you probably can't see terribly well. Um, it's just kind of grungy. Uh, there is a lot of grime and uh, dirt. This thing's been sitting in a garage for like a really long time. All right, so here's our, here's kind of the, the front business end. Now, of course, I before I wipe this down and, and soak it, gotta take all the electronics and stuff like that. Okay, looks like the barrel connector here for the key lock has been cut off. Here is a bag with a bunch of front panel screws, things like that. There's a little speaker in there. Uh, this speaker looks like it did not come with this case, but uh, there are a bunch of nice little plastic AT standoffs in here, and those are great. There's a big old ferrite bead there too, probably for the front panel connector. But yeah, it's got a little shielded speaker here, but it looks way too small to fit right here where you'd normally put a speaker. But I'm pretty sure I have a unshielded speaker that can go there and I think it'll be fine because um, this is not gonna have any hard drive or anything like that. And it's gonna be solid state except for a floppy drive, of course. All right, so this is a little, probably a little hard to see, but there are screws that hold this plate on. And then this is kind of weird. But here's the back panel. Uh, looks like it's got a PS2 connector on it, which I may or may not be able to use. And then uh, it's actually got a PS2 connector and a uh, um, AT connector right here. So again, I have not messed with this thing at all. All right, what about like this? That makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? All right, so it looks like there's a spot for a screw. Wow, like none of this lines up. Yeah, so it looks like I can probably drill some holes and retrofit this. Uh, hopefully the camera's picking this up. So this will fit kind of right about here, uh, but none of the screws or anything like that line up, which is kind of a bummer. Power supply should fit okay down here as long as it's not too big. 
Uh, I may have to grind off the edge of this, but I don't think I will. It might just fit. Eh, maybe not. <laughs> all right, well, shoot. I saw this in here and thought that that would be all I needed to do. But uh, getting this expansion slot bracket mounted in the exact correct place would be absolutely critical to getting this done. Now, up here at the top, uh, there are a couple of threaded holes. So I'm thinking if I can line this up just right, I may be able to drill some holes on the back and then use these thread holes here to get two screws there and one right here by the power supply. Um, but this screw here looks like it's probably in the way. So, shoot, I wonder if this was a project that somebody else had and never completed. All right, well, I got a little bit of time, so let's go ahead and uh, let's just take all the electronics off. Let's just get this thing cleaned and we'll just kind of go from there. Yeah, so hopefully this will be something I can do. Uh, this is, of course, standard mid-90s steel, uh, reasonably thick. Uh, nothing's rolled. It's got sharp edges. This case will absolutely slice you open first chance it gets. And it's rusty and covered in grime. So <laughs> hopefully I got my tetanus shots in order. All right, let's begin. Ew. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> and this has flathead screws on it. I will most likely not keep this switch. Oh, actually, I think I will keep that switch. And it looks like we got a fan shroud here that doesn't even belong to this case. So who knows where that even came from. Oh, that is lovely grime. <laughs> but this has flathead screws on it, so I have to go get a flathead screwdriver. And it looks like it's got nuts on the back. Yeah, there we go. All right, but I wanted to get this uh, like soaked and scrubbed or today because I like to try and get this built over this long weekend. Today again is Friday, the day after Thanksgiving here in the US. Let's see. It's actually surprised to see these rubber feet are in okay condition. They're gross, but they're all right. I'm gonna leave these stickers on, at least on the back. I like how there's one here that just says keyboard. So let's see where I can get with a soft brush first. This is just hand soap. And I'm being really careful because I don't want to drag my hand across and cut myself on these edges. Geez, I, I even have to be careful holding the top over here. I was putting a little too much pressure on it and I could feel it dig it into my finger a little bit. Man, I almost feel like I need like a degreaser. <laughs> Stuff's coming off, but it's, it's not great. Let me try a harder brush. All right, so I've got a, I got a sponge with a Scotch-Brite on it, and I've got a really hard bristle brush, so I'm just gonna try that first. Add a little more soap. not really budging but it's mostly just it's just dirt it's just dirt it's not uh, it's not surface rust I don't want to clean the bottom of this yet because I'm kind of using the bottom tray here to hold soapy water so let's just try a little scotch bright Wow scotch brights doing it but boy you gotta really work at it Yeah, some of these like splotches though are just not wanting to budge. 
So we'll set that aside. Maybe, maybe we can let it soak. So don't skewer me in the comments, please, but I think what we're going to end up going for is basically a uh, just a largely clean build. As long as there's no like major awful rust, I think we'll be okay. Oh man, this little expansion slot cover is like extra sharp. It's also a totally different type of metal. This is much thinner than the metal that the case is made out of, definitely for a different case. Looks like I can take the front bezel off and I'd rather clean the bezel in soapy water. <laughs> there we go. Nice. So yeah, this guy will get a deep clean. I'm probably gonna remove these because a DX4 100 is going in here. May or may not keep these, I don't know yet. Okay, this thing's pretty grungy. I think if there was any part of this case that I would consider really super ultra scrubbing, and we'll see if I eat my words, um, and maybe even sanding and repainting, it'd be this shell. But it is a lovely beige. <laughs> Ooh, not bad. Not great, not bad. I don't want to go too ham on this paint because it'll probably come off. This is scotch bright after all. All in all, it's not that bad. This case lived a hard life, I think. <laughs> yeah, that inside track, probably hard to see from the camera, but this inside track right here is pretty gross. pretty much running out of sunlight pretty fast here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give this, all this stuff a rinse. It's, I mean, it's a lot better, but it's still a bit grungy. Oh, I forgot to scrub the bottom of this. <laughs> See if we can maybe clean off these feet. Not bad. Again, not great, <laughs> but not bad. All right, uh, I think this concludes part one of part one. Um, the other part of the uh, part one I want to include, <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm a dork is uh, cleaning up the plastic bits in the sink. So I will do that and we'll go from there. It is the next day. You might recall this is my 486 build, probably my favorite computer that I have. It was made with uh, mostly new old stock parts. And my goal is basically to take this and transfer it into the case that I've been cleaning. Cleaned case looks 
a lot better. It's still not looking anywhere near new, but it's good enough for me. So the plan here is I'm gonna take everything out of here except the power supply because I need this power supply for a different project where I need minus five volts and I can only get that with the AT power supply here. This is a new old stock power supply. It's still old, but it's the nicest AT power supply that I have. So before I can start taking all this and simply transplanting it into the new, <laughs> new case, I need to get all this stuff out, take out the motherboard, temporarily mount it in the new case, put a couple of cards in and figure out where that little expansion bracket goes and then drill some holes in the other case and mount that expansion slot cover thing so that I can mount all the rest of my cards. So I've got a drill, I've got a Dremel, uh, hopefully I can make something work otherwise this is going to be another failed video. I don't know why I said that, maybe I'll edit it out. Anyway, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take this apart and we'll go from there. Yeah, boy. All right, so that's all I'm gonna take out of here for now. Let's test fit the motherboard. It's only gonna be in temporarily because obviously I'm not gonna leave the motherboard in if I'm grinding metal. Okay, so here's the new case. This is the back. This is the front. It's just a bare metal case. Uh, if I can, this is the power supply I'm gonna use. This is a relatively new power supply, ATX. And with that, I'm hoping to use this. And I don't think I have anything in this system that requires minus five volts. So hopefully this will work here. I was also test fitting to make sure that it would fit right here. I'm hoping too, I can tuck all the wires and stuff I'm not needing back be behind here. Hmm. I did just realize that this fan is gonna be largely blocked, but uh, I'm not going to be pulling hardly anything out of this power supply, so hopefully it'll be okay. Worst case scenario, I can, I'll drill out a hole, you know, I'll cut out a big giant hole here, but I really don't think that'll be necessary. Be neat if I could maybe mount this upside down. Nope. <laughs> but these uh, screws do match up, which is kind of nice that AT and ATX have kept the same screw pattern for so, so, so very long. Let's mount the motherboard and see how things line up. All right, so this is the back. That goes there. These need to come out. Let's kind of see what lines up here. All right, so it wants... All right, so... Need to move some of these around. Oh yeah, nice. I'm just gonna kinda place it here, kinda roughly where it needs to be. So I might be able to use the keyboard as a guide. It sits pretty far down. I've got a AT keyboard cable from my retro desk, which I just stole. And I'm just gonna plug this in just to kind of help things stay lined up. All right, so I've got that plugged in and just using it as a guide. Oh man, this might actually be kind of easy-ish. So there's one card. Ooh, you know what? And I can screw it in. I can screw these cards in. And I think I'll be in pretty good shape. Yeah, 
uh, this back ISA slot is a tight one. This is where my I.O. controller normally goes. That is not bad. <laughs> that is not bad at all. So I've got my Sharpie. Oop, bump the camera. What's kind of funny is there's already like red markings on this expansion slot bracket. Making me think that maybe this is the not the first time somebody's done this with this exact bracket. <laughs> Okay, so we're, we're pretty well lined up there. The trick though is I need to mark, I don't think I can get this Sharpie in this hole. Did that work? Oh, it did work. Okay, I'm kind of kind of ruining this Sharpie a little bit, but I don't care. All right, so I've got three screw holes that this will work. Yeah, okay. I think that's pretty good. I'm only gonna be able to do three screws because um, there's an area down here that was cut out for some reason. Normally there'd be material right there, but somebody cut it out for some reason. I don't know why. All right, let's pull this apart and uh, we'll be in the garage and do some drilling. Good times. Welcome to the garage. <laughs> All right, so I've got a little folding table here that is probably absolutely the wrong thing to use for this but it's what I have available right now uh, I've got my punch hammer my drill and uh, let's go ahead and put on some safety glasses all right so I need to make three divots and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put the divot very slightly to the right just very slightly. I'm hoping right about there I'll do. Man, this case is freaking solid and it's not helping that this table is just moving when I hit it. Okay, uh, took the case and put it down on the ground and punched it a few times with the punch. Now I'm holding it against the edge of the table here. I would prefer not to drill a hole in my plastic table, but hopefully this will stay in one pleat, one where it needs to be. <laughs> I didn't think this would be this hard. <laughs> uh, drill bit looks okay. Just don't make them like this anymore, man. Whoop. Uh, motion lights. Come on. Lights on, please. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, starting to get a little bulge on the other side. What is this thing made out of? I am definitely not using the right kind of drill bit. The, the kit I have says, drilling and driving wood, metal, plastic, masonry. Whoa. All right, we got a hole. All right, we're back from the garage. Uh, finished drilling, uh, did a little bit of dremeling also to uh, adjust some things. And let's go ahead and put this expansion slot bracket back in place. Now I basically did a fitment, looked like it fit good. Unfortunately, uh, the hole over here did not quite line up. But while I had it together, I just kind of did this quickly off camera. Um, I found out that uh, the power supply should fit 
These are just standard coarse thread screws. Thankfully, this bracket is um, already threaded. Makes things a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these screws a bit loose. Yeah, like that. And it shouldn't really matter what size or length screw I use because it's got to get past this little kind of stuck out spot here. And good. Yeah, this looks like it'll fit no problem. I think I'm still going to leave this just a little bit loose so it can move around a little bit. And I think I'll just leave it that way for now and then I'll tighten it up once I have the motherboard in. Because none of this was really meant to go together. But look at that. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's in there. The case is complete again. I, I gotta wonder if the previous owner had intended on doing the mod that I'm doing now and just just never got around to it. You know, Pentiums came out. and Next thing you know, Pentium 2s came out. ATX became the standard. Who knows? Whew. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna leave that a little loose. Let's go ahead and put the motherboard in. This is a little fiddly. I think I'm getting good at it though. Maybe. <laughs> All right, we're gonna line this up a little bit, just a little massaging to get it lined up with the one screw that we have right here. And you know what, let me back this off just a little also. I want all this to just be a little bit loosey-goosey here. Keyboard lines up perfectly, that is great. Let's try and remember where everything goes. I kind of want to do this one first because it's so dang tight. If you're not cringing, I'm cringing. <laughs> All right, good. Making sure this is lined up. Yeah, there we go. Get the fingers under the motherboard a little bit. Yeah, nice. It's our SD to IDE adapter. May as well go ahead and run this other serial port. Oh, right. <laughs> you know what? I never noticed this bracket already had serial ports built into it. Uh, so this is going to be COM2, I guess. <sighs> Just don't make them like this anymore. <laughs> It is going into plastic, so I don't want to go, well, it might be like a thin layer of metal, but it feels like if I crank it down too hard, I'll strip it, so I'm just gonna leave that like that. So I keep this one installed so that I can switch between, because I've got a COM port, a serial port on the IO controller directly, and uh, partially because sometimes I need two nine pins and I don't want to use an adapter, so I can quickly open this and plug this in instead. as tight as I want that. All right, those are in there good. Don't like this. All right, we got the back in. Yeah, that's looking good. Really wish we had a little more support right here, but it's, it's okay. Not great, not bad. <laughs> and because my 3D printer is only PLA, gotta be kinda gentle with this one. But let's do Nick next. Throw in our lovely Sound Blaster AWE. Yeah, this is fitting really well. This is great. Let's go ahead and tighten down the motherboard. All right, just nice and snug, nothing crazy. Tighten down our expansion slot bracket. And just snug. So over here, I've got a couple of old school solid brackets. It looks like I need three of them. 
which is good because that's exactly how many I have. And because I'm dumb and don't think ahead, I'm going to need to loosen some of these screws. So let's flip this baby back around so you can kind of see what I'm doing, even though my arm keeps getting in the way. Again, gotta be really careful dropping these in because this metal is sharp. Go carefully drop into place. Great. And I know they're not period, but if I have any spares, which I think I do, uh, I'm gonna put thumb screws on this. Just it makes things a lot easier. All right. So this would normally be the bottom of the case, but uh, this one's actually the top. So all of the IO is actually, and the CPU and everything is actually up here at the top, um, which doesn't really do wonders for cooling, but it's a 486. Like this case doesn't even have fans <laughs> other than the one that's gonna be right here and kind of constricted anyway. So I'm not really sweating it too bad. I've also, as you might recall, I have a little graphite thermal pad here uh, to help with the 486. Pretty sure back in the day when I was building the 486, I did not really give two you-know-whats about cable management. Man, that is so bizarre, especially for such an old case. That is just weird. Get good access though. I feel like this is maybe a little easier. Yes. Man, this thing's getting a 486. Oh, dang. Before I put the top bay in, I think we need to put this guy in next. All right, I got a speaker that I think will fit right there. Oh, no, I guess not. So this is the speaker I have. I thought it might fit right there, and it sort of doesn't. So I'll need to order a speaker for this. Let's hook up front panel. Okay, took a short break, got these hooked up. I'm pretty sure this one's wrong. I think everything else is okay. I'm not really sure what's gonna light up up here on the front. I went and looked up the motherboard jumpers in Total Hardware 99 and uh, JP15 up here at the top, which you can't see because the stupid bar is in the way, uh, should be where I get some lights. So we'll see what all end up, what all I end up getting up here for the uh, the light up bits on the front here, so. But uh, yep, and then I forgot to hit record and I went ahead and hooked up the power switch and um, also collected the various drives that are gonna go in here. One of the things that I wanna do is I wanna see if I can install this IDE zip drive. This is an NEC. I have no idea if it works, so we'll see about that. I have two of these. I have this one that's beige, which would be ideal. Uh, and I have another one that's gray that looks a little bit newer but uh, we shall see. I have this one configured as slave. The 8X Creative Labs CD-ROM drive is configured as master. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough plugs or if my IDE cable is gonna be long enough, so we will find out. Greetings, YouTube audience. In the next section, I managed to figure out how to connect the front bezel to the chassis directly. I had totally forgot that it's supposed to be attached to the shell of the case. Let's just skip to the part where I'm installing the drives, shall we? In the next video, I'll have the bezel installed properly. At the time, it seemed so weird that I couldn't attach it to the chassis. Now I feel really silly. Okay, once again, we are back. I uh, had to fight with the front bezel a little bit, but I managed to get it flush. But I wanted to get the front bezel on so that I could see where the drives and stuff like that are gonna end up when they are installed. And something kind of interesting here is it looks like this actually has a third kind of hidden bay down here where you could put presumably a hard drive. So you probably have a five and a quarter inch drive here. But three and a half inch drives were starting to become more commonplace. So it's just kind of interesting that they would put that way down there. So we want the floppy drive all the way on the bottom. All right, so that's gonna sit about there. All right, so we just got those two screws holding it in. Let's see if the CD-ROM drive still fits. Okay, it does. Well, yeah, actually, 
that sort of kind of works because of the way the front of this, the aesthetic of this case is. All right, so we'll go with that. And again, you'll see what I mean here when I flip things around. So yeah, the, the drive kind of sticks out, but it sticks out and lines up with the cool little sort of molding thing here. So that's actually nice. I, I don't hate that at all. All right, so I'm just checking the, where the floppy drive cable needs to go. It's gotta go pretty far. If I want this to be A, uh, this needs to run down here. Oh, I think this will work, barely. Keep in mind there will be a power supply right here. And this will have to come up and plug into A. But we have our optical drive here. Whenever you're building a system, especially an old system, plan ahead. Boy, that does reach though. So I could do it that way or kind of flatten it down like that. All right, so let's do this one first. Yeah, I think I'm gonna run out of these fine thread screws. I'll have to track down some more. Let's just see if this fits. Let me just plop it right in here, I think. Oh man, this thing is stacked, literally. Nice. This drive probably doesn't work. <laughs> if it doesn't, I'll try the other one. And uh, hey, you know, I'll have a working zip drive, which will actually come in really handy because uh, I want to use this system to image three and a half in, or three and a half inch and five and a quarter inch drives, and uh, be easy to just uh, write them directly to zip disk. And then I have a USB zip drive, which works perfectly fine on a modern PC like Windows 10, and uh, I can you know make backups of all those. Eventually, I want to get fancy with this and do networking and do like a DOS packet driver and then FTP it over to my file server or something like that. Okay, we're gonna reset the area a little bit here and we'll be right back. So we got our primary and secondary IDE. Floppy's got a bend way over here. Can we go back around this side maybe? Uh, ribbon cables. Oh shoot, I don't remember which one is uh, pin one. Oh, there it is. I forgot this one's marked. Okay, there we go. Yes. Okay, this is a modular power supply actually, so let's see what cables we have. So let's try and be sneaky. And run this around back. Actually, you know what, I am gonna need both. Because I can plug this in there. And then the CD-ROM drive. You know what, I am gonna need both because I need to power this guy way up here. So we'll have to pull that out and run that. These are such a pain because they're so cheaply made and the pins move around and that went right in, yay. <laughs> okay, we got everything plugged in. So that's for one. This is for the other one. So this is a 20 pin. There we go. Okay, there we go, that's two. Now for proper aesthetics, you'd want this to be silver of course, but I don't have that. Now this is bumping into the screw. What I'm gonna have to do is just do three screws. That's what I was kind of thinking would have to happen anyway. Yeah, and then this one here, there's no way I'm going to be able to angle that just right. All right, there's a 450 watt power supply. That's probably easily double what this system came with and probably three times what it needs. To power the SD to IDE, man, I got to print another one of these with like a big spacer behind it so it doesn't move. I already added like a reinforcement here in Tinkercad. I am far from a 3D modeler. Yeah, let's power it on and see what it does, huh? All right, uh, this is just a real quick and dirty setup. This is a real wide shot. 
So you should see, hopefully if all goes well, things will turn on on this monitor here. The ATX power supply is plugged into mains and the rear switch is powered off. This switch here should theoretically be in the off position. Let's see what happens. Okay. Uh. Hmm. All right, battery in the camera is almost dead and uh, we're gonna round out this video with a full boot up test. So uh, let's boot this up and see what it does. I think this will pretty much be the end of the video. Part two will be fixing that switch, configuring the zip drive, testing it of course. Uh, what I did just to close this low voltage, this is strictly low voltage, a uh, little circuit here to just make the power supply turn on. Uh, this is no different than like if you're familiar with uh, some power supplies, they come with uh, a little plug that plugs directly into the motherboard power connector and it's got a little loop on it. So if you happen to do like water cooling or something like that, you can run your power supply and run your loop uh, without turning the computer on. So that's what this, that's really all this does. So this should just power on as soon as I flip the switch. So let's see what happens. Okay. Hey, there we go. 32 megs of RAM. Scan both floppies. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah, no hard drive LED. So I probably have that plugged in backwards. I'll flip it around. I don't want to do it while it's on. And nothing on the front panel here lights up at all. So I'll have to fiddle with that. Be curious if the zip drive magically shows up. It might. Dope. <laughs> uh, all right, well, it boots and it works and it's in this case. So, um, well, it boots, I guess it doesn't really work, but uh, this, is, uh, this is a good step. Uh, this is really, I really like this case. This whole thing is to actually sort of do kind of a, almost a downgrade in the case really, but I just feel like this case is a lot more theme and period appropriate for this system. And I just love how it looks. It's, it's kind of one of those, you know, it's so ugly that it's beautiful kind of cases. So uh, happy to have it and uh, just got to overcome some old computer challenges, especially when using uh, newer components like power supplies and things like that. So. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, we'll catch you in part two where we'll hopefully get this project finished up. Keep it 90s, my friends.